Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming here uh, for the session. Uh, I'm really glad. I know that many people have said this today. I'm very glad to be here in person um, to be able to present this. So thank you to OCP, the organizers, and uh, of course, Weven. So I'm Raghavan Venugopal. I'm the executive director at Weven. And today, I'll be presenting about our product portfolio strategy that extends all the way from cloud to edge and how we build our designs using modeler approach. So let's get going. Um, the philosophy that is the glue that drives us in our product portfolio is driven by four trends. The first trend is uh, the power density. Uh, the power keeps increasing, and thereby power density uh, per U or per uh, chassis or per rack is also going up. So that is a key trend that we see, and I'm sure you all are seeing that as well. Uh, the next trend that we see is the processor choices uh, are going up or exponentially increasing, uh, which is as a consumer, as a buyer uh, is great, as a supplier is great. Uh, however, when it comes to maintenance and uh, serviceability of all these different processor choices that are going to be available on the market in five years from now, if we don't make the right choices now, it's going to be a nightmare. So one of the items that we're going to talk about here is about uh, maintainability and um, serviceability that comes with these different kinds of processor choices that we have. Uh, the third trend that we see is processor core density is also increasing, core count is increasing, which means that uh, there is a potential for uh, realization uh, of more resources, uh, more efficient usage of resources. So we'll talk more about that in that trend. And then the fourth trend is 5G. So we're seeing 5G, we're seeing a lot of applications on 5G. So what are we doing about that? That would be the fourth trend. So these four trends are what are the four categories that we hear. Um, you know, we're presenting uh, lots of workshops and content, and all of them would be associated with these four trends. And we have categorized three of the topics, like three topics in each one of these trends. So we're going to go over 12 topics in this uh, session. OK, so the first one power density continues to rise. And what that means is we need to have creative solutions to cool. And you know these three topics that you see here is around those creative solutions that we have built. The first one is a workshop. It's about ORV3, blind mate, uh, liquid cooling IT gear that we will be co-presenting with Facebook. Uh, the second one is a white paper that we are, uh, we are uh, you know, we have developed and we've contributed. And this white paper is about liquid cooling, integration, and logistics, um, you know, the design guidelines. And then the third one is actually very interesting. I think this would be of uh, use to anybody who wants to understand about two-phase immersion cooling. This is not just about theory. This is actually our learning. And uh, we have um, a panel that we are co-presenting with Microsoft about our learning on immersion cooling, two-phase immersion cooling. Um, and that's also going to be there. So these are all the three uh, areas that would be available. And I will go uh, into a little bit of detail. And if you want more details, of course, you can go into those workshops uh, that will be having these. So from a ORV3 uh, blind mate liquid cooling IT gear, this workshop, so what you see here is basically a chassis that was built for air-cooled. Uh, it goes into an ORV3 rack, uh, open rack V3 uh, rack that's air cooled. Now we got to turn this uh, chassis to be able to fit into liquid cooling. And the components that you see here, the hose, the hose guides, the plug side, the socket, uh, the TTV module, the injection module, uh, all of these, the system manifold, all of these were built by Weven. And uh, these are the different components that make this chassis ready for liquid cooling. And this is what you will be seeing in that workshop. Okay. So the second one is um, the guidelines for immersion cooled IT equipment. So as you know, 
all the equipment that we have today, all the IT gear that we have today is based on air cold. And what this means is all the materials that we use around IT gear is all suitable for air cold. Now, we take the same IT gear and we are immersing into a new technology which uses a fluid and we use two-phase immersion cooling to cool the same material that was earlier built for air cold. So there are lots of challenges in this. And we want to understand what those challenges are and how to overcome them, how these materials react, how these materials need to be handled, how the fluid need to be handled. Um, in order to have a safe and uh, in order to ensure a safe operation of the immersion cooled IT gear. So that's basically what we've converted into design guidelines, and that would be available as a white paper in this, um, in this document. So the next item here in the first trend is about uh, immersion cooling, two-phase immersion cooling. And here, the journey for Weven started almost three years back, three and a half years back. Um, the first phase of this journey was to understand about the technology aspects of immersion cooling and baseline the different variables and the knobs that uh, are important for immersion cooling to function optimally. And that was the first phase. Um, the second phase was to take existing air-cooled hardware and to immerse them in the technology that we know now works and try to have a baselining of uh, comparison, performance comparisons between the air cool system and the immersion cool system. And that's the second phase. And the third phase, which is where we are going next, is basically to build purpose-built hardware that would work even better, uh, taking advantage of this immersion cool technology. So that's the third phase. And what you see here in this panel is all the learnings that we went through. Uh, as an SI, uh, we are very proud to have built this first tank. It's a 38U tank. It's capable to cool 17.4 uh, kilowatts of power. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we built this tank from grounds up, so it's a weaving product. Uh, we also see the need for an SI uh, to have the capability to understand about this technology, and that's why we spent our resources in R&D to build this tank ourselves, so we can be a vertical integrator because we know about servers, we know about cloud, we know about our customers who are in the cloud. So we can take all that learning and apply it into a new technology like immersion cooling. And that's why we built this building block ourselves. So the journey, um, you know, the challenges that we saw in this journey is basically material selection as far as the tank itself goes, um, the, the, you know, the ability for manufacturing it in the factory, how the factory needs to be redesigned, how the DC needs to be redesigned to make sure that these can be deployed properly. Uh, and then once it is deployed, the commissioning work that happens during the deployment, and then once it is running, what kind of failures, what kind of monitoring we need to be doing, and what kind of root cause analysis and failure analysis that needs to be run. All of that is going, to is going to be in this panel. So if you are interested, a little bit interested in this technology, I would certainly uh, request you to be part of this panel uh, that we co-present with Microsoft. So those are the three in the first trend. Now we go to the second trend. The second trend that we see is the process of choices are increasing. And like I said, as the process of choices increase, five years from now, if we don't make the right choice point for a management framework, as this uh, proliferation is happening, we're going to have a nightmare on our hands. We are going to have a hard time servicing all these different configurations because each one of them would be unique. But if we want them not to be unique and if we want them to be easily serviceable, then we need to make sure that the framework that is used for management is common and can be easily scaled across different processor configurations and different processor families. So basically a framework and uh, a firmware uh, framework that is processor agnostic. And that's basically what we're trying to do here. The first one you see is uh, pros and cons of integrating a modular BMC design, what is called as the DCSCM. It's the data center ready secure control module uh, into a server. 
The second one is uh, OCP server, Delta Lake, OSF. OSF is uh, the open system firmware. And uh, this is actually the first server that we have contributed to OCP. It is an OCP uh, server that also has open system firmware. We'll see a little bit of detail in the next slide. And then finally, we also talk about, uh, again, the challenges that we uh, face when we completely change from the UEFI BIOS into open system firmware BIOS. Uh, some of the challenges that we face and some of the solutions um, that we specifically addressed is presented as a white paper in this uh, last section. So the first one, um, you know, this is, again, the journey started two and a half years back. Um, we started as a concept. We built a first modular design, uh, basically taking a monolithic motherboard, which is what the norm is today, and breaking it into two components, the host processor module and uh, the DCSCM, which is the data center-ready secure control module, and then standardizing the interface between them. And more importantly, taking all the firmware components out of that host processor module into the DCSCM. And what this does is it turns the hardware, um, it turns the host processor module into just a hardware. Uh, there is no firmware to it. And since the interface is now standardized, it, the development and the validation of the host processor module becomes separated out from the system development. So it's a key um, answer to the challenge of the cloud timeline. We heard a little bit in the keynote today about cloud timeline, which is like every year there is a new product offering. And that is a cloud timeline versus an enterprise timeline is like two years, or an ASIC timeline is two years. So we have a cloud timeline where there are new products, there are new processes that are going to be coming out in every 12 months. And in order for that to keep up as a system designer, as an SI, we need to make sure that we have a component that is common across all these different changes. And that's what this does. Uh, again, you know, there were challenges. We now have a product that's going to be available next year, starting next year with DCSCM. So we have some challenges any, with any new concept. You know, not everything is going to be rosy. We find out some uh, challenges that we have to overcome. So in this workshop, we would talk about the challenges that we faced as well and about the, the positives. The positives, of course, cost, time to market, um, you know, validation, and then the disaggregation between the firmware and the hardware. All of those are the positives. Okay. The second one is the OCP server Delta Lake OSF, how tos and features. Again, this workshop uh, is going to showcase the OCP server. Uh, it's a Yosemite V3 server um, that is going to be, it has already been developed with OSF, and we'll showcase uh, the feature set, and we would compare that against the UEFI bias and show that it is, um, you know, feature, feature set compatible. Um, and like I said, you know, this is something that we've contributed back to OCP. Again, a proud moment for us uh, to give back to the community um, with this product line. Uh, again, this journey, the OSF journey, also uh, started with us first starting the development with Intel Broadwell. And now we are on the third stage. You know, where there was Intel Broadwell, then there is Sky Lake, and then there is Delta Lake. And there is a future to it. We are already looking at uh, Sapphire Rapids. So that's the fourth step. Uh, now we are on the third step. As we started, we were doing just the basic, uh, you know, IPMI, ACPI, just the normal baseboard config stuff on the first step. The third step, we are actually now doing security, RAS feature, performance tuning. So all that is already available. And in Sapphire Rapids, we're going to have even better it's going to be CXL ready. It's going to have all the memory features that comes with Sapphire Rapids. So, you know, it's uh, the timeline and um, everything about OSF looks uh, pretty, pretty um, interesting. Okay, so uh, the open system firmware development on OCP platform. This is a white paper, and why this white paper is important is again, you know. With OCP branded servers in March of 2021, um, the requirement has changed for any OCP branded server to be compatible with OSF firmware. So with that 
um, did that with that change in requirement. Uh, some of our partners started using Core Boot and Linux Boot as their o open system uh, firmware architecture. And as they gravitated towards Core Boot and uh, Linux Boot, uh, they found out some deficiencies uh, that they did not see in UEFI. And what we did here is basically try to implement IPMI connection into Core Boot and Linux Boot. IPMI, as you all know, is very important. It uh, basically helps us manage all the assets inside the chassis. So if we can integrate IPMI and make it successful for OSF, we believe that that's a great uh, opportunity and also what we can give back to the community to make sure that OSF becomes successful. Now to the third trend. So processor core count um, increases, right? So as processor core count increases, we see that there is um, a potential for higher utilization of resources. So what this means is, you know, we have a 1P uh, system, Yosemite V3, that's a 1P system. And what we see here is like what we talked about uh, earlier, this 1P system is able to cater to multiple use cases. A 1P system usually used to be a low-end uh, server with only very simple use cases, but now we are able to use that same 1P system for many use cases. And as we start to use these 1P systems for many use cases, again, we need to have a common framework that is very important. And so the management of that 1P system becomes important. And that's what this workshop would be talking about. How do we have a common framework making sure that our BMC is divided appropriately where the commonality between all these configurations is maintained? Okay. So the second one is um, the improvement of OAI uh, system management. Um, and then the third one is, um, you know, we have a live demo um, on the record-breaking power density. It's three kilowatt in one U. This is another immersion cooling uh, showcasing that we're doing. Uh, it's a mid-level immersion cooling tank. Uh, that can cool up to six kilowatts. So let me go into detail into one of these. So like I said, I think I went into the detail of this one already. Um, so let's go to the second one. So the OAI is open AI um, system. And this open AI system, you know, what we are doing here, how we are contributing here is um, by uh, taking our DCSEM and trying to fit it into this open uh, AI, AI, OAI system um, and making sure that uh, the OAM's uh, UARDs are streamlined. So we're basically taking the existing design and trying to map it into a more streamlined version and also being able to provide the DCSCM support into the uh, OAI system. So those are the things that you would see here in this uh, presentation. And in this third one, uh, this, um, you know, certainly if, again, you're interested on 2P, uh, two-phase immersion cooling, this is something that I would strongly recommend that you go uh, to this booth. Uh, it's a live demo. It shows uh, the OAMs that are built using Habana uh, GPUs. So basically, Habana GPUs are on an OAM board, and eight of these uh, are in that board. And it's a very high power density system. Uh, right now, it's around 3,000 uh, 3, uh, kilowatts in a 3U air-cooled uh, space. Now, in this uh, immersion cool system, we've taken this 3U and converted it into 1U. Uh, so we basically uh, you know, reduce the dimensions. And um, on the other 1U, there is a server. And all of this is inside a liquid stack tank. And uh, this one is really phenomenal. You should go take a look at this. And we're basically able to cool up to six kilowatts in this tank. Uh, the coolness about the, uh, literally the coolness about the two-phase immersion cooling is that we would be able to cool up to 4,000 watts in one U. And with the PUE of 1.01 or 1.02, so this is, uh, compared to all of the technologies that are present today, this is the best. Okay, 5G. Five more minutes. So 5G becomes pervasive. Uh, the first one is Open Edge. Uh, it's basically the 
uh, you know, 5G becomes pervasive. So what does that mean? It means that data centers are going to go disaggregated, smaller data centers, smaller data centers, wider, widespread data centers in different locations, not necessarily all homogeneous environment. Uh, so all these are challenges that comes with 5G. So to address these challenges, we need to have systems that can work to overcome these challenges. And the systems that we are going to be talking about here is the EP100 and the ES200. And in this first topic, what we have here is a rack management uh, solution by Vivin. Um, again, just like how we have the BMC, this is a rack management solution. The second one is we are contributing this uh, design specification back. Uh, this is a white paper that talks about the details about this rack management solution. And the third one is the spec of the ES200 server itself. So the first, uh, the workshop here would talk about the rack management, would show you the rack management solution. The rack management solution, basically you have multiple sleds, um, and then at the chassis level, you have uh, the chassis assets, the fan and the power supplies, and you, know, you have to manage all these assets, the chassis assets and also the sled assets, which basically the BMC is managing for the sled. So the rack manager needs to communicate with all the sleds and also manage the chassis assets. And that's what the rack manager is doing. And then it needs to pipe all that information to northbound traffic using Redfish. So what we have done here is use all open standards and we have a, uh, a rack management solution that is functioning and that is basically part of our EP100 solution. Um, this one, again, you know, this goes into the details of the rack manager specification itself, so that's available as well. And then the last one, the ES200, um, is basically, again, this is um, a 2U server, um, and it is specifically for AI on the edge and also MEP on the edge. So there are different applications when it comes to edge, you know, the CU, DU, core, AI, MEP. So CU, DU, core can be taken care of by our EP100 platform. And then the MEP and uh, AI can be taken care of the ES200 platform. And uh, basically, these platforms are short depth. You know, they have uh, uh, multiple sleds, multiple configurations, uh, good level of PCIe expansion capabilities, and um, robust. They are built for uh, different environments. And what you see here is also cool is uh, another one of our immersion cooling tanks, but that one is the entry immersion cooling tank, which can cool one of the ES200 sleds. So it's a, it's a really cool small tank that can cool uh, one node of ES200. And we did this to just to showcase the ability of the technology to basically reside in any hostile environment. And uh, so that will be there in our booth if you want to take a look at it. Um, OK, one more minute to go. Last slide. Weaven uh, is a Platinum member. We've been part of this community since 2010. We love OCP. We love to contribute to OCP. We love the partnership. Uh, we enjoy coming here. Uh, you know, we've, uh, after two years, we've been able to come back. So we enjoy coming here. We enjoy showing our work. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to most of our team members. You know, Jenny has been our uh, pride star who was able to pull everything together. Um, so thanks to all the team members to make this happen uh, through multiple challenges. So from an OCP standpoint, we have 22 OCP accepted products. Uh, we are the number one OCP rack provider. Uh, we ship 10,000 racks every quarter. Um, so, you know, significant amount of OCP gear that gets delivered through Weven. And then we are in multiple OCP projects. Uh, you name it, compute, storage, edge, open RMC, open BMC, everything, we are there. And then finally, we love to work with partners. We love to engage partners in different countries and different regions who support uh, OCP. And that's it. Let's go sell more OCP hardware. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot.